Today's video got a little gameplay for you here. This is just a little Mutt Seasons playoff game. And uh, running some dollar on defense. Actually running the Colts playbook on offense in this one. So if you guys want to get any of my full ebooks, they're available in the description. I feel like this does a really good job of showing kind of how powerful dollar can truly be. Uh, here kind of goes up top first play. We're able to get the interception and uh, able to take the ball away. Really nice pick by me. And uh, we're going to get an, an easy stop. Kind of an easy stop first first possession all right anytime they'll throw you something like that that's always good for uh, just just kind of getting you know out in front now uh, one of the things i want to talk about in terms of madden in general today is uh, just kind of the state of the madden 24 meta and why it is important to understand the meta as you kind of go forward and so madden has really changed a lot over the last couple of years and simultaneously been relatively similar one of the ways that it's changed is uh, what has gone to next gen offense has definitely changed. Users are slower than they've ever been. Uh, not necessarily slower than they've ever been, but they're progressively slower on next gen Madden than what we've seen in you know current gen Madden. So that has kind of changed how defense has to be played and how offense is played, really, because on offense you don't really have to worry about the user usering more than maybe one or two routes, and so it's a big, big part of kind of the experience now on next gen with that being said it means your defense has to be a little bit more disciplined you have to uh, just be able to put better coverage on the field it's hard to sit in one defense really all game and just be able to have a really good user and, and win games this in, anymore it's you have to kind of mix up your coverages which really kind of plays into kind of a general meta that we're seeing develop in the real nfl in the real nfl we're seeing a lot of kind of split safety split field coverages too high safety looks, and really if you watch a lot of the playoff games, relatively low scoring uh, just in terms of how things worked. And the reason why is because they were able to disguise their coverages behind on the back end with split field safeties. By having two high safeties, you can change your coverage really in almost anything you want. You could be in cover three, cover four, cover two, man coverage, zone coverage, match coverage. You just have all kinds of different options. And so it makes it to where you give the same look pre-snap, but then you change the coverage in behind it post-snap. Now, uh, one of the other things that's kind of going on in the real NFL a lot is these kind of simulated pressures where we're showing a blitz from the right, but we're sending a blitz from the left, or we're showing a heavy blitz, and then we drop out and play coverage. Those are some of the other things that you're starting to see kind of develop as a general overarching meta in, in the real NFL. So I think some of this uh, does kind of explain a little bit uh, in terms of you know what you need to do defensively in Madden, you know one of the th one of the principles that's really always been true of Madden is you need to have a blitz threat. No matter what defense you're running, you need to have some type of way in which you are going to get pressure on the quarterback. Just like in the real NFL, if you can get pressure on the cornerback, and the less people that you have to send to get that pressure, the more likely of a chance that you're going to have at being able to throw off and constrain space. Uh, throw off or uh, contain closing or uh, take away throwing windows as well as speed the quarterback up. So pressure has always been a necessity in Madden for sure, because it's really one of the only major tools in my opinion that we have defensively. Number one is that we, you know, just have to be able to get pressure. Uh, the second tool that you have in your toolkit defensively is really your, uh, your ability to change the look post snap, your ability to adjust to the offense, your ability to give them the same look, but the defenders are rolling into different zones and taking away different space and, and all of that. So that's one of the other real big keys, I think, to defense is you have to be able to take away the most amount of space possible and also do it while making everything look the same. As you see here in this throughout this game, pretty much this is my main defensive look. I press the defense, then I back off the slot corner on the right. We either send three, send four, send five out of that look. And then every now and then I'll send uh, DB fire two from the same basic look. And then really the main thing that's changing in behind this is just kind of how I'm adapting the coverage based off of just where he's trying to attack. There's some other things that's really important and it kind of comes down to the fundamental principle of defense in my opinion. And that is the fundamental defensive principle that is, I think the most important is the idea of space constraint. Offenses try to create space. Defenses try to constrain space. And the reason that that's significant for our purposes today is because the defense is trying to constrain the space, based off of where the ball is at on the field, it actually changes 
where the space actually is for the offense as well. So, for example, if he's running a short side bunch, that's going to be defended differently than a wide side bunch. And there's just different routes and different plays that you have to be aware of based off of hash mark. Another really underrated aspect of Madden that a lot of people don't think about in terms of defense is the playbook your opponent is running. The playbook your opponent is running is super, super important to be aware of. The playbook that your opponent is running can give you a lot of information about what is possible. The, the playbook they're running, the abilities they're running, I don't know how I give that up on 4th of 21, but the playbook that they are running, the defense, or I'm sorry, the playbook they're running, the formation they're running, where they're at on the field, the abilities they're running offensively, those all communicate different things. For example, in, in earlier in the year, you were only able to have like a slot apprentice, maybe a tight end apprentice, maybe a backfield apprentice. And so it would limit the type of route combos you could put on the field. Another thing that's important is my opponent is running the Colts playbook, and you would probably want to defend the Colts playbook a little bit differently than you might want to defend the West Coast bunch playbook, for example. So the reason I'm saying that is by having a good knowledge, uh, a good knowledge of playbook awareness, it can really. I don't know how. I feel like I, I feel like he kind of usered that, and I don't know that he. I don't know how he was able to use that actually to catch up to that route with a 90, 90, 95 speed, maybe Ray Lewis at the most, probably. But anyways, so playbook knowledge is super important. My opponent is running the Colts playbook. So what are the main plays that you need to be aware of from Colts? Well, they have a lot of C routes, so you have to under, you have to really kind of wrestle with, is your opponent willing to throw C routes? So far, I don't think he's thrown a single C route, okay? Uh, so that's that's part of it. The second thing that's important to wrestle with here, I can't believe I I can't believe I went for the pick there. I know better than to go for the pick there. You got to just let the KO do its work. But the second thing is, what are the most powerful plays? So from Colts, you have double posts, right? So you have to have a plan for double posts. Most when they're in bunch offset, you've got to be aware of really a couple plays. You got to be aware of verticals, double post, smash return, and every now and then you're going to get Z spot and go from a really really advanced player. Those are the main plays that you're going to get from Bunch Offset and Colts. What are the main plays you're going to get from Bunch Strong Nasty and Colts? You're going to get Dagger. You're going to get Mesh Flat Spot. You're going to get Wide Trail. And you're going to get um, the RPO. Now, most and most of the time, from my experience, a lot of people are going to basically run a lot of Dagger and Mesh Flat Spot in general. Or they're going to run a lot of Wide Trail if you're playing them in man coverage. So you can also kind of think, okay, so I'm running this defense, right? I'm running dollar with the backed off slot corner. What are the vulnerabilities of that defense that I know that my opponent is likely to attack? If I'm playing somebody that has a good offensive playbook, a good offensive system, what are they probably going to attack? And then how do I have a plan to be able to counter that, right? You always want to have, I think one of the most important things in Madden that I'm starting to really understand is you, you have to understand the why. So you have to understand why things work. Very often, a lot of people will contribute like either, um, what's the word, like RNG or I'm trying to remember what the word is, where they where they basically say, or uh, DDA, DDA, uh, RNG, randomness. Uh, they, they kind of just assume that everything is random and there are some random aspects of the game. I don't want to say that there's not, okay? We, we've played Madden long enough. We understand that RNG and DDA, that, that stuff may 100% exist. But whether it exists or not, it's really outside of our control. And so when we think about how we can go about becoming better Madden players, I think one of the most important and significant exercises to do is to ask the question, why? Why did that route get open? Why did that blitz come in? Why did that... Uh, why did that coverage defense work? Why did that coverage defense not work? Why did that? And, and there's a lot of reasons as to why. It could be because we ran the play on one hash as opposed to the other hash. It could be because it was a fade route, not a streak route. It could be because it was the double post post route, not the deep corner post route. Those are all factors. But again, just forcing yourself to stop blaming the game for everything that goes wrong, right? Stop blaming the game for everything goes wrong. Understand that because you can't really control it. The at the end of the day, the video game is the video game. The only thing you can control is your adjustments, your inputs, what you put into the game. So uh, learn as much as possible. I think one of the easiest ways to get better at Madden is to stop thinking you know everything. 
I've never been a part of a community, and I've been a, I've been in the Madden community for literally twelve years now since Madden twelve. I actually started getting in into Madden seriously in Madden ten, Madden eleven, and then I started the channel in Madden twelve. That's a crazy lurk. <laughs> I started the channel in Madden, in Madden twelve. It's probably one of the best user plays I've made all year, and. Being a part of this community for tw what literally 12 years now, one of the things that I've come to really believe is that it's one of the only communities, it's not the only community where it's prevalent, but it's really, I think, the biggest community where it's prevalent is there's this, there's an immense amount of pride in players in the Madden community, myself, in, myself included. And there's this, uh, I don't know if ego is the right word, I would say just pride in general, but one of the things that I've tried to get better at is a willingness to be wrong, a willingness to learn, a willingness to understand. And again, I think this will make everybody better because I've gotten comments sometimes <laughs> from people and some of the comments that I read are just, they're just objectively wrong. And the, the frustrating part about that is if you try to tell somebody they're objectively wrong, oftentimes it's not like they're going to just agree with you. And whenever you're not willing to be, my mentor used to say this to me all the time, but he said, essentially, if you ever get to a point in your life where you're not willing to be coached, if you ever get to a point in your life where you're, you're not willing to be teachable or coachable, we might as this is a terrible play that I make here. I actually have a lot open. And then I just kind of dilly dally. I'm up 21 to seven. I'm honestly just kind of messing around. And then I thought he was going to keep running. He stops running that throw big. But he said, if you ever uh, ever get to a point in your life where you're willing to, and I do a lot of coaching sessions like this, actually. Let me, let me explain this real quick. I do a lot of coaching sessions where it's almost like the, they don't really want my advice. They want me to put a stamp of approval on what they think. And to me, it's like you're paying me money to coach you, to develop you, to help, to tell you what's in my head. And you're, all you're doing is spending your time telling me what's in your head. And I just think that's that's a bad attitude. It's just not a winning mentality because winning is on the other side of failure every single time. Uh, my One of my favorite um, – I thought I could have picked that. I was trying to really – I knew he was going to call something like that. I was trying to go for the pick, and I think we go to half here. But one of my favorite just general – I don't know if quotes quote, – quotes, I guess. It's the Michael Jordan commercial where he talks about all of the – game-winning shots that he's taken and he's missed. And he says, you know, I fail over and over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed, right? Failure is on the road to success. And so if you're not willing to admit when you're wrong, if you're not willing to admit when you've quote-unquote failed, and I don't think failure is final, right? Failure is not really failure. Failure is learning at, at the real core of it. But, but anyways, if you're not willing to admit when you're wrong, it's really hard to get better that's my biggest point. If you're not willing to admit somebody's better than you, and this is one of the things, man, you can learn a little bit from everybody. You know, Henry, who's, in my opinion, the best Madden player of all time, the guy that I study the most, what I, what I love about Henry is if you ever hear him, if you ever hear him give, give uh, Madden advice, like, you know, he gets a lot of this, like, you know, if I want to be on your level, what do I need to do? The thing that Henry would pretty much always unanimously say is you've got to play the game a lot. That's the first thing. But the second thing that he says is, you know, you basically want to learn as much about the game as possible. The majority of Madden is knowledge gap. And it's true. It's about 80% knowledge gap, 20% skill gap, in my opinion. I would, I would say knowledge gap is putting a good route combo on the field, whereas skill gap is making the right read on the route combo. And the same to be true of defense. I think defense is putting a good blitz on the field, putting good adjustments on the field. But this skill gap is really usering, you know, usering your responsibility well. I think that's the primary skill gap defensively. So anyways, that being said, you've got to be a learner. If you're not willing to put yourself in positions where you're going to fail, you'll put yourself in positions where you're going to be teachable, coachable, and learnable, it's really hard to get better at this game. And I just, I just find a lot of Madden players, they really don't want advice. And so they kind of stay average, for lack of a better word, or they kind of stay like they're really good against – a bad player and then they play a good player and it's just a completely different game because they they literally don't know anything because they haven't been willing to be coached they haven't been willing to be developed you know if it, i heard this from somebody the other day and i thought this was so accurate they said if tom brady is if 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 tom brady who's you know widely considered to be the greatest quarterback of all time 
if he has a football coach and he has multiple coaches, what makes you think that you don't need one? <laughs> what makes you think that you don't need one? I thought that was a really good piece of advice that they gave me. But uh, anyways, biggest thing with defense, guys, make it look the same. Have pressure. Have, have pressure. You don't have to send pressure every play, but you've got to have a threat of pressure consistently. The other big thing about defense, again, your goal is to constrain space. So one of the most underrated things about defense, as we uh, wrap up here, one of the most underrated, underrated uh, things about defense is not only just making everything look the same, but also um, – Try to think for lack of a better word, like uh, like give up field goals, not touchdowns. Play the bend but don't break game. Understand that you know getting dotted one time is not the end of the world, but giving up a touchdown on a one play touchdown is. So make them work, make them play left handed, take away their biggest strength, and force them to play a game they don't want to play. Thanks for watching the video. I hope this helped, and uh, let me know let me know uh, what we can do to help you. If you guys want to get any of my full. Offensive or defensive ebooks, those are all available by being a Patreon member. And it's only $10. $10, and I literally share everything that I know about the game. Thanks for watching the video. You can sign up by heading down to the description and clicking the link below.